Hello and welcome back to Typical City. Who can stop Manchester City from winning back-to-back -back Champions League titles? It's a job for the rest of Europe to work out because right now we look like the favourites and comfortably so. To be honest, very comfortable. Last night was a walk in the park for City. We didn't, uh, people say get into second gear. We were chilling in first gear, mate. Barely got out of first gear. You know, absolutely cruising through that match. To the point in the second half where I thought, City aren't even trying here. They're inviting them on. It's almost like, a, let's go out and do some defensive work. Let's try and defend. See, because that's practice for Liverpool. Because we're guaranteed we're going to have to do some defending at Anfield. Guaranteed. But we didn't pose any threat going the other way. But we didn't really look like conceding in the second half too much. And I just felt like we, we cruised through that game yesterday. And we made it look easy. We made it look easy. And then you look around Europe, you look at even close to home, even in the UK, Arsenal are the best likely UK candidates to beat Manchester City to this Champions League title. But in the group stages, they were floundering a couple of times, drawing one and losing one in the group stages as well. And they weren't convincing. They've got to turn around a tie against Porto as well, where they were awful away to Porto as well. They've definitely got one eye on the Premier League because of the revenge that they want to enact on Manchester City after last season's bottle job from Arsenal last season, where they Absolutely, they're focused on it. That's all they want is the Premier League. Can they transfer that energy into the Champions League? I'm not convinced they can. And they look like they're struggling right now. I've got a good feeling that they will overturn the uh, the Porto tie. I feel like they will. But still, you know, will they be able to go into the latter stages? Because if you're struggling against Porto, good luck against Manchester City and your Real Madrids of this world, you know? And then you've got Inter Milan finishing second in the group. Last season's Champions League finalists that we struggled to beat. It was a tough 1-0 grueling match that Champions League final they're walking the league as well Serie A is getting battered by Inter Milan but Champions League they finished second to Real Sociedad and drawing three in the group stages as well they've been struggling PSG drew two lost two in the group stages and then you've got Barca they lost two in the group stages far from convincing Real Madrid though won all six and they definitely are the favourite candidates to stop Manchester City as far as I'm concerned but last night Far from convincing. Once again, another team that's not convincing me that they have what it takes to stop this Manchester City side. I just feel more confident that City are going to win this Champions League than the Premier League, to be honest. But it, the issue is it's a cup. It's a cup. Knockout stages. Anything can happen. Very little time to retrieve situations that go wrong. One mistake can be deadly in the Champions League. And we've had mistakes in our locker this season, as Manchester City fans have found out the hard way. But they've been in the Premier League. In the Champions League, we've been pretty much perfect, you know, last night equaling the record for the most consecutive wins in the competition ever, you know, talk about Champions of Europe, you'll never sing that, could we be singing in two or three years, Champions of Europe, we always sing that, we always sing that, potentially, we could be, because right now I'm struggling to see anyone, and then of course you've got Bayern as well, they're obviously a quality outfit, you know what they can do on their day, the players that they've got, incredible, they won five out of their six games in the group stage, they drew one. In the league, though, absolutely woeful. They're getting battered by Bayer Leverkusen. So there is a flakiness to Bayern buy Munich right now. Thomas Tuchel, though, he knows how to win Champions Leagues. Again, City fans, we found that out the hard way when he was manager of Chelsea. So you're wondering if they've put all the eggs in the Champions League basket. But who can stop Manchester City winning this Champions League back to back? Get in the comments below and drop a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. I want to hear your thoughts on this as well. Who do you think genuinely can stop Manchester City? Because out and out right now, I think we're the absolute favourites and comfortably so as well. Comfortably so. Last night... Comfortable victory, as I reiterate my point there. Let's have a look at the match stats. 6-2 on aggregate. 3-1 uh, last night. 61%, um, 69%, sorry, to their 31%. But outside of that, it was quite an even game. You know, 12 shots to their 11. We had three on target. They had two on target. XG, we massively underperformed. Overperformed, sorry. But we didn't get a very high XG. And I think Grabara had a big role to do with that, with that Alvarez shot that should have been saved. <laughs> to be honest, pretty woeful goalkeeping there. 0.77 XG from City compared to Copenhagen's 1.23. You know, they had more big chances than us. We obviously dominated the ball with passes. and uh, But yeah, second half, I felt like we were just going through the motions, inviting them on, defending. Let's get a bit of practice for Anfield. It felt like that. It really, really felt like that. Let's have a look at the players now. Edison. Conceded a goal, frustrating, couldn't do anything about it. But outside of that, distribution was good. 90 minutes of football played, 44 touches. Like I said, 97% passing accuracy. Six out of six long balls were accurate. Really good. And one save. 
conceded a goal, frustrating for him, couldn't do much about it. It was a great goal, great goal from Copenhagen, really well worked. Nice little back heel, 6.5 for Edison though. Can't give him more than that because not much to talk about. Ruben Diaz, nice and solid, kept it composed at the back. Good to see him come out of this game unscathed, a player that we're going to need at Anfield. He only played the 68 minutes, 131 touches, 95% passing accuracy. Uh, only a clearance, really, and an, an interception to speak of. Won 50% of his aerial duels, which isn't bad. And he only entered into one ground duel, which, again, very little to do. I did feel like Copenhagen were creating chances or, or opportunities to create chances. The, the moment before the chance was always there for Copenhagen, but I felt like City dealt with it. I felt like we dealt with it. A lot of blocked crosses, you know, interceptions here and there, and just... You know, if if any sort of... We kept them at arm's length, basically, didn't we? All game, really. Kept them at arm's length, other than the goal they scored. And I felt like Ruben Diaz played his role in that. 7 out of 10 for me. Akanji, man of the match for me. And the reason I'm giving him man of the match, there are two other players in this team that get 8 out of 10s. I'm not going to tell you who until I get to them, of course. But I do think I'm going to give it to Manuel Akanji because, like I was saying before, blocked crosses in that second half was fantastic. But that goal, that goal was absolutely sensational. What a finish that was. Striker's instincts, that was cushions it side foot beautiful jumps up gets the right air elevation in his jump and side foots it and just strokes it into that top corner a la Edin Dzeko at Old Trafford lovely lovely finish from Manuel Akanji and the fact that he scored so early just set the tone calmed everything down it gave Manchester City the opportunity to play a very casual game of football that we could quite chill out we could relax and chill in this game thanks to Manuel Akanji's goal and it was really well taken. And for that reason, I've given him man of the match. But um, outside of his goal, 119 touches, 95% passing accuracy, brilliant ball retention, one tackle, an interception, three out of six ground duels were won, three clearances and one aerial duel that he didn't win. But yeah, eight out of ten, man of the match for me. Well, man will account you, not me. I definitely didn't get man of the match. Josko, a little bit quiet, but what bugs me is that one error leading to a shot. He's just got that in him at the minute, doesn't he? He always seems to give the ball away in really dangerous areas um, that led to a shot, and it's frustrating. And he sort of, you know, before his injury, there was two or three games before his injury that he looked good. He looked really good and assured, and I was confident that they, it was a really bad time to get his injury. Last night, he didn't do anything drastic other than that one moment. He was quiet outside of that moment, but we can't afford those moments. Champions League, error leading to a shot against Real Madrid, will very likely end up in the back of the net if it's Vinicius Jr. or Jude Bellingham right now. If you're presenting them with an opportunity to have a shot on goal, can't do it. Can't do it. It's un absolutely must be avoided at all costs. So you need to be perfect in the knockout stages. And Josko wasn't perfect yesterday, unfortunately. But outside of that one mistake, he was okay. Okay. 108 touches, 94% passing accuracy, two interceptions, and he was really good bringing the ball forward. Uh, two out of two dribbles was successful, so that's definitely worth complimenting him on. Uh, two out of four ground duels won, but 6.5 for me. John Stones, substitute appearance. I was surprised he came on. I was, I was kind of annoyed, actually, that he came on. I was thinking, what are you doing, Pep? We need this man. We need this man for Anfield, but 22 minutes played unscathed, putting him in defence eased my nerves a little bit because putting him in midfield gives him a bigger job to do and higher energy is required in that midfield role that he's been playing, especially, you know, up and down the field he's been lately for Manchester City. But he came on for Ruben Diaz and played as centre-back. So I felt like that it was a a okay to do that. We got away with it to an extent. But he's still in the 22 minutes, blocked a shot and intercepted one as well. But 22 minutes of football, 6 out of 10 for me. Rico Lewis, tenacious everywhere, work rate was brilliant, uh, a little bit quality here and there, could have been a little bit better, but I still felt he was brilliant, I thought he was really enjoyable to watch him, I, I love his tenacity, he, just, he doesn't know when to quit, does he, and he, he's a target a lot for opposition, they always seem to go in for him and try to bully him off the ball, but he faces up to anyone, doesn't matter how big you are, he'll, he'll square up to you, doesn't care, I love him, I think he's a brilliant player and he's uh, he's got a lot of learning still to do. But yesterday, I thought he was good. Really, really good. 72 touches, 96% passing accuracy, two tackles, two block shots, no clearances, but six out of nine ground duels won. He was targeted yesterday again, like a lot of teams seem to do. And he came out. He came out the winner. He came out victorious in most of his ground duels. So well done, Rico Lewis. And he lost the ball five times. 7.5 for Rico. Sergio Gomez. Now, he came on for Rodri at half time. And I'm going to show you Rodri's stats in a minute, but well played Sergio Gomez, by the way, because I felt like he was good, he was solid, 
question marks over his long-term future at City still remain. I'm not sure, has he got that quality to be... Uh, he's certainly nowhere near first-team quality, is he? Like, in terms of starting eleven. He's a bench player and a rarely used one, unfortunately. But last night, we needed him and he came on. He did a good job. Did a really good job. He emulated Rodri in truth. And I'll show you why in a minute because keep an eye on these numbers. Rodri's up next. 53 touches, 91% passing accuracy, no key passes. Two tackles, a clearance, three ground jewels. He won two of them and he lost the ball six times. Seven out of ten for Sergio Gomez. Now, Rodri. Same as Sergio Gomez. Two tackles, one clearance, three ground jewels, and he won two of them. Rodri gave the ball away one more time than Sergio Gomez did. He did have a key pass to his name, though, Rodri, and that's something he's, he's level. He didn't keep the ball as well either, though, but his 89% passing accuracy is still very, very decent for Rodri. I felt like he was cruising through this game, and it was good to see another player that was a bit of a worry coming out unscathed, hopefully ready, raring to go for Anfield. 7 out of 10 for Rodri. Mateus Nunes, um, a bit of a disappointing game, to be honest. I felt like he wasn't utilised quite as much on that right wing. Could have done more. When he did get opportunities to get the ball, he didn't deliver, to be honest, for me. I felt like he let him... A little bit of a letdown yesterday. Not terrible, but could have done better. Could have done better yesterday, as you can see with the dribble attempts as well. 45 touches. Passing accuracy was 84%. One key pass, four dribble attempts, and only one of them was completed. Seven ground jewels. He only won three of them. A clearance and one disgustingly horrific broken finger, which was by far and away the most entertaining moment in that second half. Because that second half was dire it was dull and uh yeah he broke his finger and entertained the masses by doing that i mean it was like oh fucking hell what the, it's unbelievable unbelievable he even went and told the story to the bench as well he was like hey kevin you've seen my finger mate <laughs> it's like, like and kevin was like oh, right, i'm all right mate i'm all right mate but uh yeah outside of the broken finger not a great performance and i think he's been really good lately as well so it is disappointing to see his levels drop a little bit like this especially against lesser opposition that was frustrating but he's finding his feet right now. He's played left wing. He's now played right wing. He's played defensive midfield. He's played central midfield. He's played behind the striker. He's being used very, very like sparsely across the whole pitch. And uh, finding his best position seems to be a task for Pep Guardiola. And he struggled in right wing yesterday. So 6.5 for Mateus Nunes. Kovacic, on the other hand, is going from strength to strength. Every time I see him, I feel confident. I feel composed. I feel like we have control of that midfield. He was brilliant yesterday. 131 touches, 95% passing accuracy, a key pass. One tackle, four out of six ground jewels were won. Two dribble attempts, both successful. And he only gave the ball away seven times, which is the same number of times as Rodri. Yet he played the whole second, the whole match. He played the whole match. Rodri only played the first half. So well played, Mateo Kovacic. Really, really good. And the signing that I think is starting to quietly be one of our best. One of our best bits of business that we did in the summer. And he's going to be heavily used and needed in the, sec in the rest of the season. Looking forward to it. 8 out of 10 for Mateo Kovacic. Oscar Barb, I felt like he flattered to deceive a little bit. There was a couple of nice bits of skill in the first half. Really fast footwork where he just beats a player really, really easily. Other than that, a bit anonymous. A little bit anonymous. Struggled to have much of an impact in the game. And he was given the full 90 minutes to do that. But a quiet game for Oscar Barb. A quiet game. Um, but I don't think it's he's a standout one. Because I felt like the whole team was a little bit quiet yesterday. 44 touches, 73% passing accuracy. Got to get that number up. That's too loose. Far too loose with the football, that. Um, one key pass, one shot, not on target. Two dribble attempts, one of which was successful. Three out of five ground jewels won, and he lost the ball 12 times. 6.5 for Oscar Bob, but believe me, this is a guy that I think is going to be a superstar. I really believe he's going to be an absolute worldie of a player. So excited to see the future of Oscar Bob. Um, but last night, yeah, a learning curve, Champions League learning curve for Oscar Barb, and he'll, he'll come back stronger, he'll come back stronger. It wasn't a bad game, just, you know, average. Um, Alvarez, 8 out of 10, a bit lucky to get a goal, to be honest, I felt like the goal was gifted to him, it was a poor shot, it was straight at Grabara, I mean, every goalkeeper in the world should be saving that, at every level, basically. If you're an adult goalkeeper that's older than 12 years old, you should be saving that, to be honest. So he got away with that, Alvarez. But outside of that goal, he still played really well for me. I was really pleased with his impact and he was he was the dominant force in the Manchester City side yesterday. I thought he was our main threat throughout the game and he was a busybody. He, uh, he was just ahead of Kovacic quite often and those two linked up really well, I thought, as well. 
Um, but 67 touches, 91% passing accuracy, great ball retention, four key passes. So there's your uh, creativity coming out of midfield that people have been criticising him for a lot lately. Three shots, one on target, four dribble attempts. He completed two of them. Seven ground jewels. He only won two of them. Is that that's his definite weak spot to Alvarez's game? He's not the strongest guy, is he? Uh, but he only lost the ball 12 times for the full 90 minutes, so not a bad performance by any stretch of the imagination from Alvarez. And actually, it was a good performance. Uh, 8 out of 10 for me. Haaland, quiet but effective. 17 touches. Guy had nothing to do, you know, but when he did, nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. 88% passing accuracy is really good. <clears throat> Two key passes, one both to Alvarez, if I remember rightly. If Alvarez got his shot away a little bit quicker, we could be talking about an Erling Haaland assist. One aerial duel, he won it. Three shots, one ends up in the back of the net. A really good finish. He brought that ball down from Rodri, by the way, brilliantly. It was a really good um, composed touch from Haaland to then get it back and then onto his favoured left foot. And he batters it into that bottom right-hand corner. A little bit of a lucky deflection off McKenna, but I think that was goal-bound anyway, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it was good, effective performance, and I'm glad he's come out unscathed considering he played 88 minutes as well. One ground, Julie won it, lost the ball twice, 7 out of 10 for Erling Haaland. Micah Hamilton, a substitute appearance that was okay. There was a couple of moments he, he, he drove at the fullback a little bit here and there with it. He tried to get a shot, as you can see, that's one of that shots there that was blocked. Um, yeah, we're talking about 16 minutes of football, so not much to talk about really. 83%. Uh, passing accuracy, three ground jewels, so he was getting himself about the pitch reasonably well in that 16 minutes. He won one of them, but again, 16 minutes, six out of 10. I've not done Jacob right because we're talking about two minutes of football there, but I did want to mention what I saw in that two minutes was decent from Jacob Wright. It was decent. He got the ball, he composed, he, he, he spun his man, he put his body between the ball and a th I can't remember who it was, the substitute who came on for Copenhagen, but he bodied a big guy as well. I can't remember his name now. Uh, Cornelius, that was it. It was Cornelius, the big guy. He was trying to win the ball and Jacob Wright just bossed it. He bossed that situation. A couple of minutes later, he goes up the other end and he breaks the line with a fizzed-in pass right into Alvarez that created arguably the best opportunity in the second half right at the end of the game. So Jacob Wright, although he only had two minutes of football, I was still really pleased to see, but there's not that many stats to speak of, so I haven't given him a graphic, but... Pleased to see what Jacob Wright could bring in the future. But Blues, who do you think is the most likely to stop Manchester City from winning back-to-back -back Champions League titles? Can we do it? Can we win the Premier League and the Champions League? Get in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts. Like and subscribe to Typical City and I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City.